Welcome back. It is Thursday, July 27th, and the MLB, our two favorite picks, are on the way. It's Austin, joined by Logan. Let's recap yesterday, a 2 and 2 day, barely losing a little bit of juice. Let's talk about the winners and the losers. We had that over in the Royals and Guardians game. MJ Melendez, we really appreciate it, man. We needed that. We had the Rockies team total under four and a half, which was about to be one of the worst beats we've had all season. But the Nats clutch up and walk it off in the ninth. We'll take that. And then we got a little cute in those same game parlays. Just did not have a chance in those ones. But either way, if that wasn't good enough, we did have our parlay of the day, which did smack, which we will take that. We obviously do one every Monday, Wednesday, Friday on Dimers. And that one was relatively sweat free. I believe the three guys got a hit in their first plate appearance, which we love to see. So we have two plays. It's only a short slate. You got, I think, five or six games games and two of them are a double header which we don't normally like to touch let's talk about our favorite plays but first i want to talk about betfred if you haven't signed up for betfred it's a pretty good book we've been using it you can get 111 dollars in bonus bets on their site when you wager 50 bucks and get up the back to up to a thousand dollars over the four five weeks so if you're able if you're in ohio maryland arizona and iowa take advantage of it check out all the details down below if you want to sign up it's always important to have a bunch of different books that's another one that you could use to your disposal but logan i'm gonna let you lead it off i know you got a pick that everyone's gonna love where are you going today? Yeah, I've got a money line pick for, for the people. And I'm t- going to the Cardinals versus Cubs game, and I'm taking the Cardinals on the money line. Minus 102 odds on Fandle. Logan, would it just kill you to pick something square for the public one time? Yes, it would kill me, indeed. Yes, I am on the Redbirds today. I don't anticipate this line. Probably, I mean, if you probably waited to place this one, I guarantee you probably the Cubs probably creep up to that minus 120 range. That, that would probably be uh, on brand. I mean, you can get them wherever you want to get them. But I do think the Cardinals is the play in this one. These two teams played recently. The Cubs won three out of the four games in in their series at Wrigley. So, you know, you got recency bias obviously clouding the people's judgment. You got the Cubs winning, you know, a comeback game last night. Again, all these thoughts are in people's heads when they're looking at this game. I'm looking at this game from the analytics perspective. and And I think the Cardinals do get a little revenge today. First of all, I do like how they they played in that Arizona series. I really like to see how their bats came alive uh, yesterday, scoring 11 runs. I mean, that's that's definitely gives me a little bit of confidence today. And now we're we're backing Miles Michaelis. Michaelis 4.33 ERA and a 1.31 WHIP on the year for Miles Michaelis. He's burned a lot of people. You look at his two starts versus the Cubs. I mean, mixed results for sure. Five innings pitched, five earned runs. Four and one thirds innings pitched, one earned run. Both those games were on the road today. He, he is at home. Which, if you're looking at his home road splits, you're like, this is kind of weird. His e- his home ERA is actually higher at 4.95 uh, ERA at home. But I'd argue his his worst starts there came against the league's toughest matchups. He faced Houston, Cincinnati, Atlanta, Toronto. He gave up five earned runs in, in all four of those games. And I mean, those are like some of the most elite offenses in the league. I definitely think, you know, I'm not ready to put the Cubs in the, in the tough matchup category. Uh, for, for Miles Michaelis today. I think he should be able to, to manage them. On the road, the Cubs, 17th in runs, 16th in hits, 24th in strikeouts. That's about an average offense on the road. I'm not. I'm definitely not going to put them in the, in the top 10 category because they're not really deserving. They have good games, good breakout games like they do last night, and then they also have games where they just simply don't show up. That's what we've seen from the Cubs all year. In 166 plate appearances, the Cubs hitting 283 as a team. Against Miles Michaelis, uh, the expected batting average is only 252, though. Let's see if that regression comes today. I mean, that's a big discrepancy. Normally, the expected numbers are just a little bit, you know, a hair off the, the actual numbers. But obviously, the, the expected analytics uh, think the Cubs' bats slow down a little bit today. Miles Michaelis can handle them. I, I'm not asking him to go p- pitch perfect, but he needs to go, you know, pitch well enough. For us to stand a chance today. Now, Justin Steele starts for the Cubs today. 2.95 VRA and a 1.11 whip. Everyone loves backing this guy. Steele has faced the Cardinals three times, and, and the Cubs have won all three starts. So, Cubs' money line must be free as air, right? You know, I bet in years of baseball, I you know, you'd think that, right? And it's just it rarely ever turns out how you, how you think. And the Cardinals are finally seeing lefties better this month. This is why I'm backing them. Because I couldn't, I could not pick, come on here and pick Cardinals if they weren't hitting lefties well this month. St. Louis is hitting 286 versus lefties in July and 467 against lefties in their last three games. So they've been seeing lefties really well. Obviously, Justin Steele's a really challenging lefty for them to face, but I don't think Steele has as good of a matchup now as he it was earlier in the season. Because you know, St. Louis is one of those uh, you know, call them disappointing teams because they just haven't been able to hit lefties like they did last year. Well, I think finally, you know, the, the numbers are catching up to them and I think they're finally kind of showing some signs of life offensively. Look at the, the, the bullpens, though. 
Cubs 17th bullpen, in bullpen ERA, St. Louis 23rd in bullpen ERA. So obviously you see an advantage on, on paper for the Cubs. But look, the Cubs last night, they had to burn a few of their bullpen arms because Stroman did not last too long in their outing. In game one of the series, do we see maybe the Cubs play the, a more conservative approach in their bullpens and not try to burn all their bullpen arms in, in the first day of, of the series? I, I, I definitely think we could see that. It's also been a minute since I've been wronged by the Cardinals bullpen. There's a few characters in there that uh, haunt me, and I picked the Redbirds a few times, and they, they made me pay for it. Hopefully today we see a decent outing from the St. Louis bullpen. I think they're they're more than capable at home of, of putting up a respectable showing. So I am taking the Redbirds on the money line today, and that's going to be my first pick. But Austin, what are you going with? I want to touch on your pick. I mean, I, I'm liking it. The only problem is, I mean, the Cubs have been a really hot offense as of late. So Mike Wilson is mustache. They're going to make their way onto the thumbnail. We just need him to show up. I'm confident the Cardinals offense can do something against Steele. So whether or not we get a decent showing out of Mike Wilson, I think decides that one. And I think he can do it, just whether or not he wants to do it. But he has obviously been better as of late after the start of the year when he was not good. But for my game, obviously we have a short slate. I'm going to go to a different game. And I have a different sort of play here today. And uh, well, let's talk about it. It's going to be a same game parlay. I'm taking Brandon. And Nemo of the Mets to record a hit. I'm taking the full game over seven and a half in this game. It's minus 105 on DraftKings. Now, my pivot, if you can't do same game parlays, would be the full game over at nine. However, I don't really love the line at nine because I feel like that's that's prime for push territory. If it was eight and a half, my, my play would be the over at eight and a half. But the problem at nine, you need 10 runs to be scored. And I feel like they could end on nine on the dot. Maybe you see a five to four final score or a six to three type score. I'd just rather take this one and just hope that Nemo shows up and gets a hit. Worst case scenario, the full game over, soars over, and Brandon Nemo doesn't get a hit, which has happened once before when I took a play similar to this, when we took, you know, Matt McClain to get a hit in the Reds team total over. But I'm hopeful Brandon Nemo will get a hit. We'll talk about him in a second. But let's talk about why I like the over, because we're looking at Kodai Senga, who will start for the Mets. 3.27 ERA and a 1.26 whip. You look at Senga's specialty. It's striking out batters is the guy that has a pretty high K percentage. The Nationals are a team that averages the second fewest Ks per game in the MLB. So they're not striking out a lot, not swinging at some bad pitches. And Kodai Senga, a guy very similar to a guy like Blake Snell, not obviously in terms of how they pitch, but they throw a lot of balls. They're just hoping that you you throw, you throw swing at that ghost fork ball. And this is a team in the Nats that has already seen a guy like Senga before, and they actually didn't do well against him. To, uh, I mean, they did all right against him the first time around, but you're looking at Senga's props on a short slate I wouldn't be surprised if people are taking some juice props, taking guys like his over five and a half Ks or his under five and a half hits allowed. Both very juiced, but both have great hit rates. And I know this far into the season, those high hit rate, you know, props don't normally hit because the books are pretty sharp by then. They want you to lay that minus 140 juice on those, and that just doesn't hit. And so I think the Nationals, I think they can get to them today. I'm not saying the Nationals come out here. And put up seven earned runs. Probably not going to happen, but I think they have plenty of base runners on base. It's whether or not we can get the timely hits. Yesterday, in Logan's pick, the Royals got no timely hits, but maybe this Nats team, I've seen them do it before. They have talented hitters from one you know, through nine in their order that can do something with the baseball. I think they have some base runners here today. I think they can convert some into runs. But on the other side, I think Josiah Gray for the Nationals is going to give up his fair share of runs himself, too. You look at his stats, 3.45 ERA and a 1.44 whip. That whip's pretty high considering the ERA is sub three and a half. I'm expecting some regression to come his way and some regression, especially coming off a really good start last one. Seven and expect one or runs versus the Giants. If there's anything I've learned about backing inconsistent pitchers, it is that you want to fade them immediately coming off a bad start and Gray is or, or coming off a good start and Gray's coming off a great start. So I think Gray's going to come out here and give up some hits and earned runs. I mean, you look at his props, his hits hits allowed props in at five and a half, considered the over there, but a little too juice for me. You look at his earned runs props sitting at two and a half. He just gave up only one in his last start. I just, I, I think he's going to get, I think they're going to get the Mets offense is going to show up today. And he's already cooked the Mets once this year. He went out there early on in the year, six innings pitch, zero earned runs and nine strikeouts. His K props only four and a half plus 120 on the over. I just think this Mets offense who did absolutely nothing yesterday. I think they went four for 30 as a team in Yankee stadium, putting up a big one run. I think they show up today and they're going to probably need a guy like Brandon Nimmo who's going to bat lead off for him to at least do something. So obviously I like Kodai saying to give up some runs. 
I like this uh, Josiah Gray to give up runs. And I don't think Sanga goes too far into the game. Neither does Gray. So I think you're going to get the bullpens, which have both kind of really struggled lately. I think especially that Nats bullpen has been bad. So I think you've seen some runs, which is why I like the over seven and a half. It's kind of like an alt line. Now, Brandon Nemo, also we need a hit from him. He's batting 260 on the season. Pretty solid. Likely bats lead off for the Mets. So should have plenty of plate appearances in. He has a good a lifetime experience against Gray. He's four for eight lifetime with one walk in there. And he has two extra base hits and two singles in there. So... Look, I think Josiah Gray is going to throw a bunch of sliders to him. He is a lefty. Josiah Gray throws about 33-ish percent of sliders to lefties, and that is Nemo's best pitch to hit. I think hitting 316 on the year with a 295 expected batting average. So, Nemo, we need you to go get it done. Go get us a hit. Right lead off in the first inning. Get us a hit. Then we're just relying on some runs to be scored in this game, which I certainly think is going to happen. So, look, I think this is a higher scoring game. I think the over-under is at nine for a reason. Got prime weather conditions. I think we could see some home runs here. So, if you want to play some home run props, I don't mind it here but hopefully nemo gets hit hopefully this game goes over seven and a half and that's gonna be my favorite play but logan any final thoughts before we sign out of this joint let's go to and oh today you know let's just have a winning day and on this small slate and go to and oh yeah we've had a good track record when we only do two picks so hopefully it's a two and oh day and we'll be back on friday with some more picks you guys have a great thursday don't force a ton of bets into this slate because it's definitely not worth the betting on too many picks on a short slate but awesome logan signing out parlay today will return tomorrow let's have a great thursday we'll see you guys back on friday Peace.